Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. Today I wanna to go over new customer sales. How do you calculate it and how do you build it, build the logic into your model? Now what we're looking at here, this is uh, an entire uh, reporting solution that uh, I went through with uh, all the Enterprise DNA members who attended a scenario method workshop based on churn analytics. And so uh, within that, within that we, we analyzed, so you see down on this chart here, a new customer sales. So to actually get to new customer sales, you under you need to understand to break out who your new customers are or or at least classify what you consider to be a new customer. So we'll talk about that uh, just very briefly. Uh, but then we wanted to compare new customer sales to our total sales. And then from that you could derive, you know, new percentage new customers um, of total sales, new customer sales of total sales, um, how many sales you make from say steady customers, customers who uh, bought a few but aren't considered new. So there's so many great things that you can analyze uh, from this uh, technique or utilizing this technique. Uh, what I wanted to do is, um, obviously this was a really detailed session, I uh, ran for uh, well over an hour, um, had many attendees, um, very interactive, but uh, I wanna break out, I wanna break it out in, in this uh, tutorial because I think it's very interesting uh, and I think that uh, you'll benefit from the logic. If you do want to be able to download the resource, view the entire workshop, uh, see how the model works in behind the scenes and how we overlay this logic um, incrementally then I'll put a link below in the description you can have a, a look at where that is if you do want to do, uh, download a watch etc though uh, you will need to uh, think about upgrading to enterprise DNA membership okay so new customer sales now let's just jump to this page here because I've got it all set up now first of all we need to understand new customers okay now it, I likely create another video which uh, or, or uh, that goes through new customers in depth right but I do want to show how we utilize the, that technique so I'll briefly go over it to find new customer sales okay now let's jump to new customers now the key thing is understanding the logic what is a new customer and this can vary I, f I feel this will vary across any business and Essentially, what I incorporated into this demo is I wanted to evaluate a customer set. So in any particular month, I wanted to look at who are those customers. But within those customers, I wanted to break out which customers have not purchased off us prior in a prior time window up until that point. Okay. Now to do that, I worked out who am, who are my all my customers in a particular month, and then I worked out well who are my customers, who are all my customers in a ninety day window prior to that. Now we could change the window, and that's what this water parameter does here. I could change it to thirty, or I could change it to I could change it to three sixty five, which would make it an entire year, and that would actually change the results quite a bit. But in this case, we're going to just leave it at ninety and say if a customer hasn't purchased off us. Uh, have purchased off us in that particular month, but not in the three months prior, the 90 days prior, then they are considered new, okay? Now, this is what this formula does, and uh, so this this calculates the, the window, the customers within the 90 day prior window. This part of this variable calculates the customers in the current context, and then accept, what accept does is it returns another table, but it returns a table of the customers that are in this month or calculated within any particular month that are not in this prior window, this prior window that we've created. So that just, so it's purely doing exactly the logic I just described, right? And so, but it's returning a table of all of those customers. And then we go and count up those customers using count rows. And then that's how we get this, uh, this uh, these results down in this particular column here. Okay. And even with this calculation, we, we can do we can do quite a bit. Now, how do we calculate new customer sales? Okay. Now, the great thing is, if you can understand this logic, then you have absolutely nothing to worry about with this logic. Okay. And that's the great thing, because what we can do within when using calculate is we can utilize or we can change the context of our total sales amount exact by exactly this particular table function here. Accept is a table function, but it can also be used as a filter within Calculate. So it can change the context within Calculate. Okay, so really, really, really powerful stuff, right? So let's go and have a look at this particular 
uh, this particular formula. Now, this part of the formula, new customer sales, is exactly the same. So that's why I said, if you can understand new customers, then you don't have anything to worry about with new customer sales, I don't feel. But let's have a look at what we do after the return. It looks pretty simple, right? Because all we are doing is instead of count rows here, like counting up the customers we consider new, we are using this for this formula now to change the context of our simple total sales formula. And we can do that inside of Calculate. Okay, so if you look at the table down below here, we're actually looking at total sales, and this is what we are breaking out as new customer sales, because the context is being changed for only that subset of customers, which we are considering new based on this logic that we have built up in these variables. So say for instance, we actually wanted to change that time window where we considered a, a customer as new. Say for instance, if a customer has not purchased off us for say six months, or we'll go 180 days, right? If a customer has not purchased of us in 180 days prior, but then did purchase of us, we consider that customer to be new. That was too long within purchases, right? We would have maybe had to pay for additional uh, marketing. So the acquisition cost of that customer um, has gone up. Um, you know, they haven't just been a steady customer who just constantly comes back and buys off us and buys off us and buys off us. We've had to go and get them back. So that's why we consider them new, right? You'll see here that that changed the new customers, but also quite considerably changed the new customer sales because these sales here are basically just the sales of the, this group of customers, these 19 customers. And, you know, as you work down the list, this 36K is just the makeup of the customer sales from these 24 customers, right? So... Really great and interesting logic, right? I, I don't feel I need to explain anymore. Hopefully you can understand how you can move or, or you know, it's really just branching out into uh, more great insights. Now, how do you think you calculate steady um, customer sales here? Well, it's actually not that difficult because if you think about it, a steady customer is someone who is the reverse of a new customer, right? And so all we have to do is we've got total sales, we've got new customer sales. All you'd need to do is create a branch out into a new measure and go total sales minus new customer sales and then you're there. Now, well, what about if we wanted to calculate, well, new customer sales percentage? Well, here we go, uh, I've already calculated it here. And so all I need to do is bring that into the table. And you'll see that this now actually gives us a percent. And you'll see that this will actually change. I wanna show you that this actually changes. This will actually change based on the time window that we actually we actually generate. So you see here that I've increased the time window, uh, or sorry, I've decreased the time window. So uh, every 90 days, and the new customer sales has come up. Well, say for instance, we we even reduce this even more. We went 30 days. So um, if a customer has not purchased of us for in the prior month, but then they did purchase of us, so that's basically 30 days you'll see that a lot of our customers are considered new because not many are, are purchasing within those sort of time frames. So really interesting stuff, right? Really interesting stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna round things off there. I think that was a good breakout session from um, this one, which was in far more detail. We have um, you know, lost customers, uh, new customers, um, uh, in, more, in more detail, how to set it up in a visualization, how to build the model in the background, etc. So if you do wanna have a look at where, that, where that's located within Enterprise DNA Online, I'll put it in the description below. But in any case, hopefully you got a lot out of this one. You know, lots to learn. Um, the makeup of these functions and you know all these insights, new customer sales, uh, new just new customers, etc. It's just so interesting how you can incorporate a lot of these um, different table functions and mash them all together and and then and get really interesting insights like this in a really intuitive way. All the best. Look forward to talking to you soon. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.